Canadians today are reacting to Health Canada's massive overhaul to our food guide. It's out with the four food groups and in with this, a well-balanced plate. The government is encouraging Canadians to eat plenty of vegetables, choose protein foods that come from plants more often. This is, as you know, a big shift away from the previous guide in which meat and dairy each had their own category and serving sizes. Joining us in studio this morning is Canada's Health Minister, Jeanette Pettipot-Taylor. Good to have you with us this morning. Thanks for having me today. All right, let's start with the elimination of these four food groups, and you've done away with the portion sizes. Uh, why did we need to make this kind of a change? Well, I think we have to, first of all, take a few steps back. We've been working on updating Canada's food guide. I'd like to say jazz it up a little bit mm. uh, for the past several years. Uh, Health Canada workers have been working diligently at doing the research and also consulting with Canadians. So in 2016-2017, more than 20, uh, 27,000 Canadians uh, entered their submissions and wanted to we wanted to hear from them what they wanted the food guide to look like. Mm -hmm. So we had a lot of stakeholders uh, and also everyday Canadians that told us what they needed. So in the food guide, as it was in the past, as you've indicated, we focused on food groups. We've moved away from that and we're really focusing on categories of food now. So if you saw in the plate, we see that we have half of our plate. Uh, we encourage Canadians to eat a lot of fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. The other quarter is whole grains and the other quarter of that would be protein. We recognize that not all Canadians uh, eat dairy products or meat products, mm -hmm. and the previous food guide really didn't meet, the, didn't meet the needs of all Canadians, while this food guide certainly is reflective of the needs of all Canadians. If we can keep that food guide up for a second, one of the things pictorially, and I know that that was big for, the can, for Canada's food guide because then it meant everybody could access, at least with their eyes, what it should look like. I remember in the past there was a giant drumstick from a chicken leg and a big glass of milk. Those kinds of images are missing. There is dairy there. You see a little bit of yogurt. You see little tiny bits of steak, but it is not prominent. A big difference with this food guide is it's based in food science. So uh, made independent from lobby groups, which are powerful in this country, like meat producers, beef producers, uh, cattle farmers. The Dairy Farmers of Canada, although had a very measured response yesterday, have said in the past they are concerned about the lesser emphasis on milk and milk products. Are you worried at all, or is the government worried at all, about the effect this could have economically on those industries if Canadians are now following this kind of a food guide? Well, once again, as you've indicated, this food guide is based on science, the best available science, and we want to give Canadians the best available information about nutrition. But more than that, when we look at the food guide as it is now, we're not telling Canadians not to eat uh, dairy products or not to eat meat products. What we are telling Canadians, however, is to look at the variety of foods that are available out there. We have 37 million Canadians in this country that follow different diets, many of them from a multicultural type of background. Mm -hmm. So as indicated, the food guide I did in the past, they really couldn't identify to it. So we needed to develop a tool where everyone could kind of find themselves in there and also to promote healthy, uh, healthy living and healthy lifestyles. The other thing that grabs your attention when you look at that plate is there's lots of fresh fruits and vegetables. There's not a lot of white on that plate. Even in the, in the grains, the bread is a whole grain bread and, and there's no... There's no white, which I understand is your mood away, move away from processed foods. Correct. We really are encouraging Canadians to eat whole foods. And also, the food guide is not just about the food that we eat, but also that cultural experience, uh, enjoying your food, savoring your food. I know when I think of food, I think of my family. I think of my mom when she used to make homemade bread, and I would wake up in the morning to that smell, to that aroma. Sure. We simply want to make sure that Canadians look at the food guide in a different way and to encourage them healthy eating habits and also to incorporate their children in the everyday cooking and to eat less processed food and to eat more uh, focused whole foods. Families is an area when I looked at this plate I had a concern. I know when I go to the grocery store buying fresh is expensive. Mm -hmm. Replacing meat with nuts is expensive as a snack. So what has the, the health department done in terms of making this accessible for all economic levels? Absolutely. Again, if you look at the uh, plate of food that we have there, it's not all fresh fruits and vegetables. It may look like that, but if you look at the broccoli and the carrots, for example, that was frozen vegetables that were there. If you look at the tomatoes uh, in the on the plate, those are canned tomatoes. So we've really considered all of the income levels as well and we certainly recognize that there's some foods that cost more but we also recognize that some healthy choices can be done on a budget as well so if we look at this plate there's a really good mixture of all different foods uh, and once again, we really encourage all Canadians to go and, and to visit our, our new food guide. Uh, the other big change when you notice pictorially is there's no large glass of milk. There's no glass of orange juice there. It's a big glass of water. Why the move away from those beverages? We've made it very clear that water is the drink of choice. We recognize that Canadians oftentimes in a run of a day are very much dehydrated. And we certainly recognize that water is the best way to hydrate ourselves. 
Once again, we're not saying not to drink uh, those products. However, uh, they're, they, um, juice, for example, sugary juices are not the drink of choice. Again, we recognize that dairy is a very important product, and again, we're in no way indicating for, to Canadians not to drink dairy products. Uh, however, when we look at what we should have with all of our meals, we certainly recognize that water is the way to go. You've mentioned as well that multiculturalism was taken into account, a really good move, but I notice uh, you know, that your choice for rice is brown rice, coming from a culture which eats a lot of rice. We don't often choose brown rice. It is white rice. So is it fully reflective of how different cultures eat? We've certainly tried to do our best to caption on that plate as many different options as we could. Uh, we certainly couldn't put everything, but we wanted to have a good diversity on our plate. When it comes to the issue of diversity with respect to our Indigenous people as well, I'm very pleased to say that we had a, a wonderful consultation with all of the national Indigenous groups. And next year, we're going to also be launching uh, a food guide specific to uh, Indigenous peoples in, in Canada. Uh, for sure, this food guide certainly reflects their needs as well, but we also want to make sure that we're culturally sensitive to their needs. All right, good to have you here uh, today, Minister. There's a lot of politics involved in food, so it's interesting to take a look at the science as well. Thanks so much. Thanks so much.